This video is my opinion. This article was published in 2009 by Women in Crime, Inc. It was edited by a staff member at that time whose photo and name has been removed since. I know who the editor was. I'm not going to say the name because obviously it was removed for some reason. So here goes. And this video is my opinion. Your turn, The Secret Life of Patsy Ramsey. What literature might reveal about the crime scene of the beauty queen? That's the editor's title. When the murder of Jean Benet Ramsey hit the news, I thought the six-year-old pageant princess's father, John Ramsey, was some kind of pedophile and guilty of the crime. I wasn't very interested in the case. But I just switched to an early shift at work and listened to local talk radio where the case was covered extensively. But when the autopsy report and ransom that were made public, I saw Patsy Paul Ramsey, the former Miss West Virginia, as the perpetrator. I also saw the killing as a type of sacrifice. For years, I had been reading books on the psychological interpretation of mythology. From what I'd studied, many of the odd and seemingly incomprehensible aspects of the crime could be seen as having symbolic meaning known only to the offender. This type of attachment to myth and dream symbolism is typical of psychosis. In some cases, a psychotic will take destructive action, thinking it is creative, as a means to manifest their psychotic fantasy. I brought this up to the local talk radio host, but the idea was dismissed. I was curious if the idea had come up before, but back then I had no access to the internet, so I started reading about the case. The first book I got was Andrew Hodges' Mother Gone Bad, and in it I found a reference to the Seraph Report. A small group of investigators was commissioned by the Boulder Police for an assessment of the ransom note and crime. They concluded Patsy Ramsey had sacrificed her daughter. Their interpretation of sacrifice was different from mine, but at least I knew the subject had been brought up to police. At this point, the case was two years old. My line of reasoning came from an approach to dream analysis that is used by Jungians called amplification. I took the theme of literature that is prevalent in the case from the ransom note to John Douglas's Mindhunter to the Bible and looked for common elements. The common elements it found would indicate a complex, a behavior centering force in the mind of the perpetrator. For example, the role of the Psalms in the case was well known with a possible connection between the ransom amount and a common interpretation of Psalms 118 that mentions sacrifice. Also, the Ramsey Family Bible NIV study version was open to a passage that has four lines beginning with the letter CTBS, the reverse of the cryptic ransom note sign-off SBTC. Further, further reading of the Psalms revealed a repeated use of words, phrases, and ideas that are common to the crime and to Mother Patsy Ramsey's life in general. After careful study, I thought I had the key to not only the identification of the single perpetrator, but an indication that the death of Jean Benet was not due to an accident. It was the prevalent, as was the prevalent theory, but was the intentional act of a person in the grip of a psychosis. By this time, I had access to the internet. I hit the forums with my ideas and was both lauded and rebuffed. A lack of acceptance made me dig even more. I went back to the trail of literature left by Patsy herself and fixed on Muriel Sparks, the prime of Miss Jean Brody. Since Pat Patsy had chosen to form a soliloquy from the play slash novel in the talent portions of her pageants, again I was looking for an indication of a complex. I started with the movie and found three uses of the word sacrifice by Jean Brody in I thought sacrifice was the centering theme in Patsy's psychosis, which she found unavoidably attractive in Sparks' work. It took me several months before I read the book. Just a few pages in was a description of a tea party with two members of the Brody set where pineapple was served. The appearance of pineapple in John Bonet's digestive tract at autopsy, along with the Ramsey's denial of having asserted to her, and the use of pineapple by Spark in a novel was the first mythic connection for me between the crime and a work of literature Patsy was known to have been intimately familiar with. A few pages more, and the question of the spelling of possession came up in the novel. The misspelling of possession in the ransom note was part of the heated conversation of the case on the radio and internet. A detailed study of the book, play, and movie revealed many, many items common to both the crime and to Patsy 
and the literature she was known to have been associated with, including the chillingly titled Death of Innocence. Many aspects of the case seemed strange and incomprehensible to investigators and to the public and were attributed panic, amateurism, or desperation with the possible source of ideas for staging found in crime books and movies. My intention was my intention into this theme of my investigation into this theme of literature to me was has revealed coincidence after coincidence between the death of Jean Benet Ramsey and the life of Patsy Pa Ramsey. A preponderance of coincidence rules out coincidence, and out of what seems to be a random jumble comes a pattern, the use of one person by another as an object in a personal psychotic fantasy. A person in a psychosis often sees themselves as either a mythic figure or related to one in some way. They also may see themselves as part of a mythic storyline. They may exhibit behaviors that have a high degree of structure but with a low degree of rationality as they follow the mythic storyline. The story may be self-created and or part of an existing, archetypal, or well-known story that can be easily found in popular literature. It is my opinion that the death of John Bader Ramsey is a result of just such a psychosis, and the evidence for it can be found in the products of the creative life of Patsy Ramsey, her writing, her artwork, her correspondences, her pageant performances, and the ransom note, and even what was done to the body of Jean Benet. This is from the comment section. Patsy killed John Benet deliberately. No one else was involved. There was no staging for police. Everything that was done was done by Patsy for Patsy as part of a psychotic fantasy revolving around an imagined relationship with a supernatural being. The fear of judgment by that God and the fear of death. What people mistakenly take as staging for police had symbolic meaning known only to Patsy. This includes the ransom note. There were two aspects to what was done to the body. The ligatures were suspension devices. The body was posed with the arms raised and viewed and then taken down, placed in a small room, wrapped with duct tape applied to set the kidnapping state up in Patsy's mind. The ransom note is full of ideas that swirled in Patsy's mind that night and plagued her for many years. The goal was not to kill Jean Benet, but to make an angel out of her. Patsy herself said, after the funeral, Jean Benet is in heaven with God awaiting her mother's arrival and I won't be long. Patsy put Jean Benet in that heaven to complete the fantasy and her, in her mind assure the life, her life after death. As the dedication in DOI says, wherever we go, whatever we do, we're going to go through it together. Everyone knows there was pineapple in Jean Benet's proximal intestine on an autopsy, and there was a bowl of pineapple found in the home. Most people don't know that milk or cream was in the bowl as well. Lou Smith showed a crime scene photo of that bowl to John Ramsey, and John said it looked like there was milk or something in there, something in it. Lou asked him, who eats it that way? Smith was after an intruder, and he knew pineapple and cream is unusual. This is from the book The Prime of Missing Grody. Sandy Stranger had a feeling at the time that they were supposed to be the happiest days of her life, and on her 10th birthday, she said so to her best friend, Jenny Gray, who had been asked to tea at Sandy's house. The specialty of the feast was pineapple cubes with cream, and the specialty of the day was that they had left, were left to themselves. To Sandy, the unfamiliar pineapple had the authentic taste and appearance of happiness, and she focused her small eyes closely on the pale gold cubes before she scooped them up in her spoon. And she and both girls saved the cream to the last, then ate it in spoonfuls. Patsy fed Jambonet happiness in the form of pineapple just before she killed her. The answer to Lou Smith's question is characters in the book The Prime of Miss Jean Brody eat pineapple and cream. The pineapple slash cream snack was given before the death. That means elements of the story were in play before there was any need to stage. That suggests to the non-naive that the death was just another part in a sequence already started before the death. The cords on the rest and the neck might just suggest suspension, at least a creative thinking investigator that wants to explore all possibilities. And remember, there is no explanation for the 15 inches of cord, not 17, between the wrist loops as being able to fool cops 
as being bindings. They couldn't functionally bind a child as constructed, but could suspend slash pose the arms as constructed. The cord tied around the neck with the length of cord between the loop and the handle that is long enough for the handle to clear the head when brought up from behind the head when a short length would have been adequate for strangulation is an indication that the length had a function other than strangulation. It had to clear the head to fit into whatever held it as the body was suspended. This explanation also matches the length of cord between the wrist loops, which would not be binding, but would serve the purpose of raising the arms to the position they were found in if the wrist cord was placed on the same thing that held the neck ligature. The wrist ligature could not have bound the arms and could not have fooled investigators into thinking they were binding a, a binding device. Ergo, it was not staging for police. It was functional in that it could pose the arms. The neck ligature, likewise, has construction elements unrelated to strangulation, but related more to hanging. Every aspect of the, of the two ligatures can be explained as suspension devices, but, not, but cannot be explained without stretching pun intended, as binding or strangulation devices. And again, Patsy killed John Bonet deliberately. No one else was involved. There was no staging for police. The goal was not to kill John Bonet, but to make an angel out of her. Patsy herself said after the funeral, John Bonet is in heaven with God awaiting her mother's arrival, and it won't be long. Patsy put John Bonet in that heaven to complete the fantasy and, in her mind, assure her death, life after death. As the dedication DOI says, wherever we go, whatever we do, we're going to go through it together. And Patsy had applied the angel theme to John Bonet her entire life.